Half a day and good afternoon, Guam. I am Jason Salas with the KUM News Team. Once again at the Office of Civil Defense and Homeland Security uh, in Aganya Heights, there is new information to pass along to you if you were not aware of it on this Saturday afternoon on what is otherwise a tremendous island weekend. The skies are very, very clear. It's actually quite hot outside. Uh, the situation could change um, in a dramatic fashion within the next uh, 24 to 36 hours as Guam is now in condition of readiness level 3. So we are in core 3 and we have been in that condition since 1 p.m. this afternoon after Guam Governor Lu Leung Guerrero as well as the Commandant of Joint Region Marianas, uh, Rear Admiral Benjamin Nicholson met this morning. They uh, were apprised of the situation, the movement of the tropical disturbance that uh, as of right now is about 200 miles uh, to the southeast of Chuuk. So it's around Chuuk State uh, which, as you know, you know, open up Google Maps right now and you can see that it is um, uh, to our southeast. Uh, but expected, as you saw in yesterday's update, uh, expected to make some sort of passage nearby, uh, very, very close to Guam, possibly um, by Monday afternoon, Monday evening. But that's why we're here and we are going to give you the very latest information. I can see a lot of people uh, coming in right now watching the live stream right here on Facebook and YouTube. So, hafa day, everybody. Uh, from home and like I said if you're just joining us Guam is now in condition of readiness 3 that condition was declared officially by Governor Lu Leong Guerrero and Rear Admiral uh, Benjamin Nicholson at 1 p.m. today after assessing the situation and uh, possibly how the situation may change over the next um, 24 to 36 hours hello uh, Richard uh, hello Jeff uh, yes take care thank you uh, very very good comment and and that's what we're expected to do here um, as uh, information will be presented in just a few moments. So please stay with us if you're just joining us right now. Please share this live stream uh, with your friends and family uh, because we are going to get you up to speed on what is the very latest with the weather situation. Again, that tropical disturbance is still being described as such right now. Uh, still down around near Chuk, but um, as you saw in the stories we did in uh, yesterday's live stream, expected to make a um, upward uh I don't want to call it a surge, but an upward movement and expected to uh, pass very close to um, Guam sometime uh, possibly uh, Monday and Wednesday or Monday through Wednesday. Um, during that time, there are expected to be uh, very heavy winds as uh, there she is. Jenna Gamindi Blas. Hi, Jenna. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Biba Malolo Fiesta. Biba San Isidro. <laughs> Okay. Take advantage of the nice weather. There you go. Yes. And we got to take advantage of it while we can, as Jenna is going to uh, guide us into, and you watching right now on social media, into the Emergency Operations Center where we will get the very latest on uh, the disturbance. I know a couple of you have been asking, has it been named? Uh, not officially as of yet. There's okay. a seat available. White benches. All right. So here we are once again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the Response activity coordinators are here. Of course, that is Landon Aidlet, the lead forecaster with the National Weather Service. Uh, many of the island's municipal leaders uh, and emergency decision makers have gathered here in the Emergency Operations Center, of course, to find the latest about what's going on with the weather. So here is a Landon. All right, so we're hooking up a mouse right quick to this computer. Um, this is our storm. This is what is now known as Tropical Depression uh, 2W. This was upgraded to a Tropical Depression um, about 1 o'clock this afternoon by the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. Um, so this thing is in motion. We are seeing things progress with this tropical cyclone and things are moving right along as we we're expecting. So we're looking at the uh, colorized infrared video or the satellite picture. This is Wino Chuk, Chuk Lagoon. Um, and this tropical disturbance, now Tropical Depression 2W, has been sitting about southwest of Chuuk for about the last uh, day and a half. Uh, we're starting to see some change in its motion, its position, and its organization as time goes by. This is moving along right as we were expecting over the last 24 to 36 hours. So things are right on cue. Uh, we have issued a typhoon watch for Guam, Rota, Tinian, and Saipan. Uh, with this system still making a, a heading toward the Mariana Islands early next week. So that's our big concern right now. Tropical storm warnings are in effect for several islands of Chuuk and Yap states. Zooming out, this is Guam. It's a mighty sunny day out there right now. You can go pull up the slides. Um, fair weather for at least another 24 hours, but eventually the system's gonna be making its way toward the Mariana Islands. That's holding steady with the trends and the forecasts we've been looking at for the last 
several days as this system becomes better organized and it starts to wrap up into a tighter, more organized circulation center. So things are in motion. We're gonna go right into the slideshow and go all the way back to the beginning of this. Um, so again, this disturbance was formerly a uh, tropical disturbance in West Area 97W. It is now O2W, meaning it's the second tropical cyclone of 2023. Um, go back to the beginning slide. And so that was upgraded at one o'clock this morning. When I talk about tropical cyclones, uh, we've had some questions about what is tropical cyclone versus a typhoon. Tropical cyclones, that's an all-encompassing term that includes tropical depressions, tropical storms, typhoons, and super typhoons. So we've been using the term tropical cyclone a lot about a possible passage through the Mariana Islands because we're expecting a system to come through, but we're not certain if it's gonna be a depression, a storm, or a typhoon. That certainty is gradually increasing. Right now we have a tropical depression uh, in Chuuk State, and it's gonna be intensifying in the coming days. Next slide. So as of one o'clock, um, we issued this uh, graphic. This is our, our first graphic on TD02, still with that projected path toward Guam and the CNMI. This is gonna be the trend over the next several days. We're gonna be watching for any kind of little wobbles, any shifts in the forward motion and speed, also its track placement, whether it could be a, a direct passage over Guam or Saipan or to the farther east and west. Uh, at one o'clock, it was located at 5.6 north, 149 degrees east, moving north, northwest at two miles per hour with maximum sustained winds now at 30 miles per hour. Tropical storm force winds begin at 39 miles per hour. It is expected to intensify over the next uh, several days. It could become a tropical storm um, overnight tonight or early Monday morning and continue to intensify in the coming days as it approaches the Mariana Islands. At one o'clock, it was about 615 miles south, southeast of Guam. Next slide. And so again, it was at 5.6 north, 149 east, 615 miles south, southeast of Guam, and very close to Chuuk Lagoon, 235 miles west, southwest, uh, causing a lot of problems for the outer islands of western Chuuk State and far eastern Yap State. It'll hang around there for about another 24 hours, causing problems, but then start pulling away from the states and coming closer to the Mariana Islands. 30 mile per hour maximum sustain winds, they will be increasing. Next slide. Mm -hmm. So this is JTWC graphic going to the next slide. They have not updated the homepage just yet. This is their forecast plot. Uh, at one o'clock, their forecast track was favoring a passage uh, right between Rhoda and Tinian Islands as a 90 knot typhoon. That's category three. Is this what's gonna happen on Tuesday? That's a possibility. This is just a forecast. So in six hours, we're gonna have another forecast come out with changes, updates on the best available meteorological information that's been gathered and crunched through the forecast models. This track will shift little by little. This is typically how tropical cyclones operate. So this is the best available forecast at this time, but in the next six hours, another forecast will come through with the best available information in the forecast at that time. So keep in mind, this will change, it does change, it will be putting out the best available forecast. Next slide. This is the weather service graphic showing the developing tropical depression at 1 p.m. this afternoon, uh, eventually becoming a tropical storm tonight or tomorrow morning, and then a typhoon uh, by Monday, passing through the Mariana Islands as a typhoon, possibly Tuesday morning, sometime the first half of Tuesday, and then passing through the region. Next slide. And our deterministic uh, plot, this is typically what we're used to seeing, uh, these blue area, these are tropical storm force winds of 39 miles per hour. The yellow, those are destructive winds, 58 miles per hour, intensifying in the coming days, possibly becoming a typhoon midday Sunday, Sunday afternoon as it approaches Guam and the CNMI. We'll see this plot again extend northward as time goes by. And this is based on the current model as of one o'clock. This will shift. So is it possible we could take a direct hit? Absolutely. Is it possible it could shift to our east? Could it stay to our east? That remains a possibility. But the Mariana Islands are very much in the crosshairs of a passage of a tropical storm, more likely a typhoon, early next week. Next slide.
This is the Eric, Eric Cohn, the uncertainty. Uh, as time goes by, the uncertainty increases. Chances are it's most likely to pass within this white area. Guam is right here. And so we're very much within the error cone. Very rare does it extend beyond that error cone. Um, so keep that in mind. We are very much in line for a very near or direct passage of a tropical cyclone early next week. Next slide. And so this is the latest visible imagery showing that tropical depression is starting to get better. We're starting to see the deeper convection band into this low level circulation center. Uh, this is what we were wanting to see yesterday before we could start getting a better feel for the organization, the timeline of events. It is happening. This thing is starting to take shape. It's getting better organized and will continue to do so over the next 24 to 36 hours. Next slide. And so this is just uh, one of several model plots showing, of course, the track passing over Tay and Saipan. This is as of this afternoon. In six hours, that could shift to Guam or it could stay steady. Keep in mind, this changes, but all models are favoring that intensification trend showing category three typhoon within several days. A rapid intensification is a possibility with the system. This is something we're taking very seriously. This is why we're leaning forward as the government to make sure we're communicating, preparing the public, especially through the weekend while the weather's nice outside, that we lean forward and take action in case a category three storm is gonna be threatening us early next week. Next slide. This is East Polar Orbiting Satellite uh, showing the winds at the surface. This is also something that's been missing the last several days. We have a very well-defined low-level circulation center that's southwest of Chuuk Lagoon, and the winds are increasing across the broad belt around that circulation center. This is gonna to continue to uh, organize and get in better uh, position. So we'll be watching that. Uh, these winds are 20 to 25 knots sustained with pockets of 25 to 30 knots sustained uh, starting to pop up around the circulation center. Next slide. And so moving forward, uh, Typhoon Watch is now in effect for Guam, Rotatini, and Saipan. That means damaging winds of 39 miles per hour or more are possible within 48 hours. A typhoon Watch does not mean that the center of the storm will pass in 40 hours. That means those damaging winds are possibly gonna begin in 48 hours with that CPA sometime beyond 48 hours. So this is giving us that wiggle room possibility. If we go to a warning, that means those winds are expected within 24 hours. So know, those, know that difference. We'll be talking a lot about that on social media. So again, a typhoon watch is now in effect for Guam and the CNMI, damaging winds of 39 miles per hour or more are possible within 48 hours. Time frame, we're still sticking with uh, Monday to Wednesday. Uh, the current track favors a passage somewhere around Tuesday morning. But best chance, get your planning preparedness actions completed by Sunday night. Because that timeline could compress, it could be a little bit quicker, it could still be a little bit later as things evolve. But we're still looking at Monday through Wednesday. Potential for a tropical storm to typhoon force impacts. If a typhoon passes far enough to our east or west, we may only see tropical storm force conditions. But if it passes close to Guam or overhead, we can see maximum storm conditions with a typhoon. Keep that in mind. That's gonna be changing as we go on every forecast cycle. So possibility for damaging winds, destructive winds, and typhoon force winds are very much on the table for early next week. Take it seriously. O2W could intensify into a typhoon by the time of arrival to the region. Sea conditions, of course, will increasingly become hazardous to craft and swimming. Keep that in mind, even with a near miss, sea conditions would be very hazardous to be out in the waters. Next slide. The uncertainty does remain due to short-term drifting. It's moving slowly at two miles per hour. Uh, it's not taking too much forward motion at this point. Uh, so as long as it's got that slow drift, it could deviate. But we do have that well-defined circulation center that we're watching. Uh, we have a good fix of its position. Um, so we'll be tracking that slowly. Model guidance continues to push it toward the Mariana Islands. That's been a trend holding steady for about three to four days. Um, so we've not seen much deviation with that. And there's also that good potential for a rapidly developing system in the next 12 to 36 hours. I believe May 21st is the anniversary of Typhoon Pamela in 1976. 
Uh, that storm had similar origins to O2W. It started in the FSM, did a loop, and then started a track toward Guam and the CNMI and hit Guam as a category four. So there are similarities. There's a history of typhoons in May. So yes, typhoons in May can and do happen. Next slide. Little wiggles matter. And so I cannot stress this enough. Every six hours, the next forecast comes through. We're gonna see small changes in the track, small changes in the timing, small changes in the intensity. Little wiggles matter. Uh, time is on our side, keep that in mind. We have a lot of time right now to plan, prepare, take action. We are under watch, that means get ready to get ready. If we go to a warning tomorrow, that means you should start finalizing your plans for actions of protecting life and property. So again, a shift in forward motion may still happen, delaying or speeding the onset of storm conditions. We're looking at Tuesday morning, that could still shift. Keep that in mind. A shift in storm track could also occur bringing in a direct passage to Saipan or to Guam, or it could just pass to the east or west of the Mariana Islands. But there remains a good potential for rapidly intensifying the system um, that would greatly affect intensities for what we expect in the coming days. I think last slide. And so again, finally, just tropical cyclones, terminology. We have so much terminology in the National Weather Service. So if you have any questions, do send us messages on Facebook because we wanna make sure people know and understand these terms. Watches and warnings, tropical storms versus typhoons. What is a tropical cyclone? If you have any questions, ask us uh, because we wanna make sure everybody is well-versed and what's very common terminology for the Weather Service, but it may not be common and knowledgeable to people outside the agency. So if you have any questions about any of our terms that we use, let us know, give me a call, give me a message, give our office a call, send us a Facebook message. We're here to best serve the public. So. I think we're going to have the media egress and then I'll take questions. Okay, everybody, I'm going to try and uh, stay on a little bit more. Um, I'm going to try and talk to uh, Jenny Gamandi Blas again uh, with the Office of Civil Defense and Homeland Security, um, as well as Landon. Uh, after he finishes meeting. And again, um, the people in that room are the response activity coordinating. Uh, contingent, if you will. These are um, the island's mayors and vice mayors from all 19 island municipalities. These are people with uh, emergency agencies like the fire department, um, the Guam Police Department, obviously, um, customs agents, uh, agencies that are directly affected uh, when we do go into um, an emergency watch. And if you're just watching right now, um, a lot to unpack, a lot to parse. So let me, let me try and recap it as, as best I can real, real quick. Um, Guam is in a uh, typhoon watch right now. Condition of readiness three was declared at 1 p.m. this afternoon, which means we could uh, see the onset effects of potentially damaging winds 39 miles per hour or more within the next uh, 48 hours. Um, the storm itself, let's call it, let's call it a storm, is still now being classified as a tropical disturbance. And if you're wondering about, you know, um, the pecking order or the um, the totem pole, if you will, um, you get tropical disturbance, then you get tropical depression, tropical storm typhoon and then super typhoon so it's still a tropical disturbance right now uh right now uh maximum sustained winds right now with the storm about 615 miles to the south southeast of guam about 30 miles per hour but it is intensifying uh perhaps more concerning it is moving very very slow only two miles per hour and if you follow guam storms enough or at least storms in this part of the world um that's what you don't want to see because as a storm slows down and begins to kind of like um sit and stew um it gains attitude and uh, it gains in intensity, and then all of a sudden it'll, um, you know, make its way toward towards wherever it will be. Uh, it will be heading. In this case, uh, as Landon was saying, we are looking at a potentially um, very near miss, if not a uh, direct hit. But again, um, closest point of approach expected at this juncture to be around um, sometime mid uh, mid Tuesday. Um, so again, 30 mile per hour winds right now. Uh, there is going to be an update um, at. 9 p.m. tonight, and then I'm being told there's going to be a similar briefing perhaps tomorrow morning, um, during which time that Governor Lou Leon Guerrero and then uh, Rear Admiral Benjamin Nicholson, the Commandant of Joint Region Marianas, will be um, briefed on what the latest status is, and then they will make a decision uh, at that point uh, whether we will go to Core 2 or not. But as for the current moment, uh, we are at Core 3. Uh, Jenna is back in the room, so 
Let me flip the camera around because I couldn't because I know she she has way more answers than I could ever <laughs> no. give. Um, Jenna, you've been uh, you've been doing this for a while, and uh, you guys have been actually tracking this storm for a while right now. But what should the community at large uh, need to know? Because like Landon was saying, there's a lot of terminology, like a lot right. to a lot to parse, a lot to unpack. Generally speaking, what should people know about what we're going through right now? Right. So a lot of our preparedness mes messaging has been um, start your preparation efforts now be between now and Sunday. You want to have them completed no later than Sunday evening. Uh, the latest update that we received from the National Weather Service provides that uh, we, there is a possibility for a potential typhoon. So even knowing that there's a possibility of that, you want to make sure that you, you take all of your preparedness actions um, extremely seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, one way that you can do that is you know, locating your emergency preparedness kit, making sure you're stocking up on your essential supplies now. Um, you don't want to wait until the stores get you know, uh, uh, completely crowded. You also want to gas your vehicles. Oftentimes people miss this and they don't gas their vehicles, they wait until the last minute, and then you're standing in line, you're waiting in line. Um, we don't want anybody out on the roadways whenever there's uh, a potential for a typhoon. Mm -hmm. So it's important that you make all of your preparedness efforts now. Um, you can also stock up on um, not only your essential items, but um, securing your loose, any loose debris or even loose items outside of your home. Um, it's extremely important. Uh, you know, we've gone so long without a very heavy weather event. Um, so it's important that, you know, we got to remember that just because it hasn't happened in a long time doesn't mean that um, we should just, you know, let this one go by. Mm -hmm. uh, we're hearing all of the updates from National Weather Service. The latest that we received is that there is a potential for um, a typhoon. So even knowing that that is a potential, um, you want to make sure your preparedness eff efforts are completed now. Absolutely. Now, there are a lot of uh, young people watching this because, of course, we're streaming live on social media. So uh, for kids that maybe the only the only um, typhoon or weather system they've ever experienced were typhoons U2 uh, and Dolphin way back when they were really, really little right. kids, uh, what should they be doing right now as far as you know getting in the right mindset and offering to help out with the family? Right. A lot of that is having those open discussions with your parents or the elders in your household. Um, you know, letting them know about their experiences that they've had before. Um, a lot of times we encourage the youth of our community to take part in the preparedness efforts. Some ways that they can help out is just picking up items that belong to them outside of their home. Everyone has shoes, slippers that are outside, if you have toys that are outside. Um, making sure that you're having those those discussion, discussions with your family members to see exactly how you're going to prepare yourselves further. Mm -hmm. um, everyone in your household should know exactly where your emergency preparedness kits are, where the uh, important items are, the flashlights and the batteries, um, getting those together now. Uh, to make sure that they're prepared just mm. as much as the adults are. And if you think about it, like Guam is actually kind of in the opportune uh, situation right now with it being now Saturday afternoon and then we've got basically all day Sunday to to prepare, like you said, to gas the car, to buy batteries, to right. fill up the water jugs and everything if it gets to the point where we need to take more serious action. Right, absolutely. Um, there might be some guidance to put up shutters. So we have until be between now and Sunday to make those preparedness activities. Uh, Landon did provide that update that we want to make sure all of our preparedness efforts are completed by Sunday evening. Um, so really use the time now. There's some beautiful weather that we're looking at between now and tomorrow. You really want to use the opportunity now while you can. Okay, so um, speak of uh, the man himself and he shall appear. <laughs> uh, here. <laughs> Here is uh, Landon. Landon, a wonder wonderful presentation. Now, I know, you know, you and I have been doing, you know, like weather reports um, on our live stream shows uh, for a while now. People were even noting in comments and they're like, wow, Landon's not, you know, jokey jokey and, you know, uh, kind of having having fun with Jace as he normally is. You're taking this very, very seriously and you want other people to as well. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I like to have fun when it comes to weather. Uh, it's always fun to have a lighthearted conversation when it comes to weather, especially a nice sunny day like it is today. But when it comes to significant weather impacts and threats, that's something we take very seriously. And so we have a pretty significant threat to the islands that we've not seen in three years. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been in three years of La Nina. We've had no tropical weather activity here in the islands for three years since late 2019. And so we really have to get our, our minds in motion for preparedness, planning, actions to take, because we're all about protecting life and property. And so even for myself personally, it's hard to get my mind in range of tropical weather uh, and so we do have a real credible threat of a possibly significant storm system coming through the islands in several days mm -hmm. and yes. like uh, the one thing that really impressed upon me and i thought this was very well made by you was um uh what is it little little wiggles do make a difference because you know just because a storm seems to be going away from us or in either direction and everything the slightest little deviation could have significant impacts that's correct and at the very least uh, we could definitely see a uh, tent canopy tarp type storm system come to the island that would be nothing more than just ravaging your canopies and tarps 
but the chances are improving that we'll see something worse than that. Mm -hmm. um, so this is something that you should plan, prepare for, stay up to date with the latest weather forecast information from my office. We're going to have a increasing load of text bulletins coming from my office now that we have a typhoon watch in effect. Uh, the information is going to be flowing every six hours, if not more frequently, because of those um, posturings we're having at our office, also the Guam Homeland Security, which will be standing up the jig in due time. Okay. Now, when you said every six hours, now t people have been used to um, for the past few years. It's always, um, and I've been trying to tell people seven one seven one. You guys always update those really cool, you know, the graphics with the projections, everything. Seven p.m., one a.m., seven a.m., one p.m. When you say every six hours, is this like uh, three three Tuesday nine? Nights. Huh? Yeah, so the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, they update their graphics and forecast information on the 1s and 7s okay. of the clock. We operate on the 2s and 8s. Okay, and 2 and 8. we have very detailed island-specific information for anyone under a watch or warning that comes out on the, the 3s and the 9s. Mm -hmm. So every 6 hours, we have a ton of information coming out to our webpage. Uh, if you can find that on our webpage, weather.gov slash GUM, click on current hazards and then go to tropical cyclones and you'll find all of our text bulletins and our forecast plots that will be updated automatically around the clock. Yeah, and just book, do what I do, ladies and gentlemen, just bookmark it and then all you got to do is re refresh the page when you get up the next morning. It's very, very, very helpful. Okay, last question for me. Um, would you classify this storm right now as it, as it appears? Still, you know, 615 miles to the south southeast of us, but is this more of a wet storm or a windy storm or a combination of the two? Well, I think there's a potential for a very wet storm. Uh, we put out a hydrologic outlook yesterday calling for the possibility of five to nine inches of rain. That's just shy of a foot of rain uh, in a three-day period. So keep that in mind. Uh, depending on the exact track That's a lot of, of the rain. storm system, uh, it depends on really where the rain band set up. Uh, we could be on the, the smaller side of rain projections if we sit between rain bands. But if we have a band of showers training over the islands, uh, we could get some significantly heavy rainfall. Think back to 2002, Typhoon uh, Panzawa. Uh, the rainfall spread just on Guam ranged from about four inches in Marizo to 25 inches in central Guam. Mm -hmm. So over that short distance, it ranged from under a half, in, a half foot to nearly two feet of rain. There you go. Okay, so that's Landon Adlet, everybody. You're going to be seeing a lot more of him uh, this weekend and heading into the uh, early part of next week because he and his crew getting you guys absolutely up to speed uh, what it is. Landon, good hustle, man. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate it as always. Okay, Jenna, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, um, so I am going to flip around and leave you guys with some uh, closing thoughts here from, once again, from uh, Civil Defense. And again, uh, breaking everything down and making it um, uh, easily, easily... And in summation, um, there is a weather formation right now out on the water. Guam is in core three right now. That means we could experience uh, damaging winds of 39 miles per hour or more within the next 48 hours. Uh, we are being told that there may be um, additional uh, updates. The governor will be um, will be updated uh, sometime tomorrow morning, possibly. Uh, but Landon and his crew, they're going to get things done. Remember, he was saying 2 and 8 and 2 and 8. 2 p.m., 8 p.m., 2 a.m., 8 a.m. and that's in addition to uh, the stuff that the National Weather Service uh, puts out. So lots of information for you out there. Um, just do what just do what's right. Uh, again, this is a very opportune situation to take care of yourself and your family. Um, you've got the rest of the day today. You've got all day tomorrow. Uh, weather's supposed to be really really good up until about Monday when we will start to see um, some of the uh, some of the rain and then possibly closest house. Please stay safe, Guam, and we'll see you guys next time real soon.